Hey guys, if you haven't met me, my name is Josh. My dad and I are working on a modern Norfolk Southern layout down here in our basement, which you guys will see in just a second. But uh, anyways, the purpose of this video is to show you guys how to do model railroad signaling. Uh, like I said, we have a layout in there, and one thing we really wanted to incorporate into that layout is realistic operations. And one of the way that we've one of the ways that we've been able to achieve that is through signaling. I think it adds a lot to uh, model railroading in general. And in my personal opinion, it's one of the coolest aspects of the hobby, being able to see the lights change as you go past them and be able to click routes as a dispatcher and line change through the model layout. So anyways, that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I've got a lot to cover, and this is just the first part. There's probably going to be two, maybe even three different parts that follow this. So Anyway, stay tuned for those, but this, we're just going to cover the basics. We're going to talk about signaling itself. I'm going to define some terms. Um, and so again, some of these terms are um, for the area that I model. They may be different. Uh, the biggest thing I can suggest to you guys is to do research. Google is a great tool to find um, all sorts of articles, books, anything you want about signaling. There's all sorts, all sorts of um, um, material out there about signaling. So anyways, guys. I'm really excited about this video. I'm excited to share with you guys what I have learned. And one more thing before I start this video, I'm going to be talking about a lot here. And um, I definitely couldn't have done it with a lot of, without a lot of other people's help um, and also some friends. So again, I just want to thank them for helping me and in turn, I can help you. So I'm not taking credit for all of it and most of it even, because um, like I said, other people have taught me and what I'm doing is just relaying the information onto you guys. And so you guys can um, hopefully learn from this and uh, maybe even apply it to your layout if you guys are interested in it. So anyways, guys, let's get started. All right, so the signaling system that we're using is made by Digitrax. The hardware is all made by Digitrax, and the software is a free um, PC-based computer program that's called JMRI. A lot of you guys have probably heard of it, and it's a really useful tool just in general, not even for signaling. And um, I'll talk more about this in my last video. That's going to be more on the software, the computer programming, and all that stuff. Um, but anyways, like I said, what we use is Digitrax hardware. There's three different components of that, and I'll show you in just a second. But um, we have the detector, the controller for the signals, and then the interface between the computer and the layout. And again, I'll show that to you in just a second, so hold on. But uh, anyways, we're using that. And then for our hardware, or software, excuse me, we're going to be using CAT, C-A-T-S, and I'll explain that again in the future in JMRI, just to give you a heads up and kind of point you in the direction of where we're going here. Um, but anyways, uh, I just wanted to say real quick that there's all sorts of different signaling systems out there, um, and you can pick which one you want. Again, I don't know much about the others. I know a fair amount about the Digitrack system in JMRI, um, but I know there are some others, and um, I'll list some of those in the description below. I can't think of them off, think of them off the top of my head, but uh, I'll try to do my best to uh, get you guys some information on those other ones. But based on what I've been working on, Digitrax works really great, and I definitely recommend that. And they aren't telling me to say that. That's just my personal opinion based on what we have going in there. So anyways, let's get going. All right, so if you're watching this video, most of you guys have probably seen my layout before. Um, but if not, this is our layout, and these are the signals that we're going to be working on here over the next few videos. And like I said, they're working now, so I'm going to kind of work backwards now that I have it all under my belt and hopefully explain to you guys how to get these things to work. Guys, well, real quick, before we dive on into this signaling system, I wanted to give you just kind of a heads up of what we're working towards here to kind of show you what the end result is. I think um, you may notice that as I go through this um, video, there's kind of a lot of information thrown at you and there's kind of a lot to do. So it might seem a little overwhelming at times. I just want to give you guys a quick look um, at what we're working towards. I think having this picture in mind might kind of help you um, as you work through this system. Because I know it definitely takes a while to do all this and it's a lot of work, um, effort, and money. So, um, But anyways, I just kind of want to show you what you can do here. This is a schematic of our layout. We'll talk about all this more in the future. But anyways, some neat things you can do is you can click a signal. You can see that it just turned green and the route just cleared for this train to go all the way to the next control point. You can also do neat things through this panel, like throw switches. You can see here I click on the switch, and my, th my crossovers are thrown. Now that they're thrown, I can clear the signal through the selected route, and that'll again give me the green signal that I'm looking for. Alright, so for model railroad signaling, and in that case, 
uh, prototype signaling as well, there's a lot of terms and definitions that might be useful as we go forward. So uh, real quick in the next few minutes here, I'm just going to kind of go over some facts and information about signaling that might be uh, beneficial as we move forward. So the first thing to consider um, when you're talking about uh, model railroad signaling is that you have two types. You have CTC, which is um, computerized traffic control or centralized something like that, and then you also have ABS, which stands for automatic block signaling. CTC operates with a dispatcher who controls train movements. You have uh, the turnouts, which are also controlled by a dispatcher. Track occupancy is relayed to a computer screen on the dispatcher's panel, and then you also have the controlled signals and that kind of goes along with uh, controlled train movements where the dispatcher actually aligns the signals and tells trains when it's okay to move and organizes um, train movements. ABS stands for automatic block signaling and these signals operate automatically. The whole system is automatic and um, they also relay track occupancy but those relay the information to a computer which automatically generates signal indications and usually these are found on less busy rail lines um, and uh, like I said, there's no dispatcher, it's automatic. Um, so, like I said, they're less busy rail lines typically. Alright, so you'll have to forgive my drawing here. I'm not exactly an artist when it comes to whiteboard drawing, but I think it's the best way to demonstrate this. So, in general, um, with both types of signaling systems, both uh, CTC and ABS, they all operate with the same um, basic units and parameters. Um, the first of which would be a block. Now a block is defined as an electrically isolated section of track both on the prototype and on the model. So as you can see here I have a section of track drawn out and what I'm going to do is just divide it into a couple different sections here and uh, what the red lines there indicate are a um, cut in the block. So you can see I'd have block one, I'd have a second block, and then a third block. And so as I mentioned before, these blocks relay informa information back to the dispatcher um, or the computer, whether it's CTC or ABS. And usually for these signals, uh, for these blocks, you have signals at each of the uh, block ends. So you can see there for the block boundary between block 1 and block 2, you typically have a signal facing in each direction and what the signal indicates to the train crew or locomotive engineer or conductor is the condition of the track ahead. So for instance if there's a train in the block ahead of the signal the signal is going to show red and the purpose of that is to tell the train crew to uh, that they can't proceed because there's a train in the block ahead of them and of course you don't want a train collision. Alright, so just going over a few more terms here, um, and this applies to CTC controlled territory. Um, so say we have a section of track here, I'm going to draw a little passing siding there onto the left. And then off to the right there, say we have a section of double track, and what these little di uh, dashed lines that I'm placing on the track indicate are um, block boundaries, as I mentioned earlier. The red lines there indicate separate blocks, um, which would be electrically isolated, and then the green lines which I'm drawing in here indicate a uh, control point. And what a control point is, um, is a section of track found on CTC territory that the dispatcher controls. And um, it's its own block, so to speak, and it uh, always contains a switch. Um, or I'd say most of the time contains a switch. And control points have signals facing in either direction that the dispatcher controls. And so he controls these movements and they're not green until he says so. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about here are intermediate signals. As I just mentioned, um, a dispatcher controls the signals and train movements through a control point, or as you can see here labeled on the board, CP. Um, in between control points, there are intermediate signals. And uh, as you can see, I just labeled these here, and they are in between two control points. And what they do, um, they're automatic signals that um, are not controlled by the dispatcher and they just uh, relay information about the track ahead. And so usually a CTC system is a combination of both control point signals and intermediate signals. Alright, the last thing I want to cover here are signal indications. You'll hear me talk about these a lot in my how-to video here just because they're pretty important. So uh, the way railroad signaling works is that uh, usually the signal either indicates how fast you can go or it tells you about the condition of the track ahead. So usually you find single head signals 
um, where there are no switches, and you'll usually find a double-headed signal um, where there are turnouts located, and sometimes even triple heads, but I won't get into that right now. So um, usually how they work is that if the route is lined straight, so you can see that the switch is now lined for the main line, usually the upper head will show a uh, green or yellow depending on the track ahead and um, what that means is you have permission to go straight through and you'll have a clear signal indication. However, if the route is lined not for the main line but for a different track, um, what this is usually called is a di diverging route and what that means is you're diverging onto a different track or you're taking um, the route that is not the straight or main route. And so in uh, railroading terms, that's called a diverging route. And that would be a diverging signal. And usually, from everything I've learned, a diverging signal indication is anything under a red. So um, here you can see um, I have a uh, signal on the bottom head is lit. And usually the signal ahead of that signal will show an advanced signal indication, such as an advanced diverging signal. So just to clarify here, uh, going in the opposite direction of this same piece of track, usually if you're going through the diverging route, which would be um, the top track there onto the main line, you're going to have a signal under red, because like I said before, any signal under red usually means a diverging route. However, if you're going to be taking the main track, which would be the track on the bottom, and you're going to continue through that switch onto the uh, single set track, you're going to be taking the main or straight route, and that'll just be a regular clear signal. Alright guys, so that just about wraps up this first part of the video. I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to leave, uh, leave a comment section in the box below. I try my best to get back to all you guys. And if not, you can send me a private or personal message as well on YouTube, and I'll get back to you there. Um, I'm not quite as fast as replying there as the comments, though. So. Anyways, guys, I hope that was helpful. Like I said, there's more videos coming on the actual installation of the hardware. I'll show you how everything is wired, and hopefully it'll be really well laid out so you guys can understand it better. And then after that, we'll have more videos on the finished system and also the software and the programming and all that stuff. So it's coming. Stay tuned. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.